Okay, so hope uh, you are enjoying this session, learning something. Okay, that's good. So if you have questions, it's good. Just ask, have it clarified. Same applies for the online students. We'll continue from the next point here about praying in the spirit. So we said that when we pray in the spirit, we can pray limitless prayers without boundaries. We talked about praying in God's perfect will, which makes praying in the spirit so very important for us as believers. We can also overcome the weaknesses of our flesh. Now, the next important thing about praying in the spirit is that when we pray in the spirit or when we pray in tongues, we are built up spiritually. Okay, so as you are aware, we are spirit, soul, and body. From 1 Thessalonians 5:23, we understand that as human beings, God has created us with spirit, soul, and body. We know how to build our bodies and keep our bodies healthy, nurture our bodies. We may even know how to maintain our soul, our mind, our will, or our decision-making capacity, our emotions. We know, may know how to manage it. Now, how do you maintain your spirit man in good health, if you want to put it that way, or make your spirit man grow up, develop your spirit man? One of the ways that the Word of God tells us is, by praying in the Holy Spirit. So when I pray in the Holy Spirit, I may not understand, but what's happening? My spirit man is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. If you want to look at it as maturing and growing up, growing up, growing up, growing up in God. Okay. So that is what happens to my spirit man when I pray in the Holy Spirit. So just because we don't understand what we are saying, or for some people, it's it's very weird. What is this? I'm praying in a language uh, which my mind cannot grasp. Why should I do this? You see from scripture, so many beautiful things are happening when we are praying in tongues, when we are praying in the Holy Spirit. So 1 Corinthians 14, 4, Paul said this. He said, he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. So when I pray in an unknown tongue, edify means build up. So when I, let's say for my physical body, if I do some exercises, you know, I walk or I do some dumbbells, I do things like that. What, what am I doing? I'm building up. What do they say? Body building, isn't it? I'm making my body stronger, my abilities physically are increasing. My capacity is increasing. In the same way, if you want to do spiritual bodybuilding, okay, I'm just using that phrase, but that's what it means. What is Paul saying? He's saying, he who speaks in an unknown tongue builds up himself. So I want to become strong in my spirit, man. What should I do? Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, right? Pray in the spirit. I can't see outside, but inside I'm being built up. Okay, it's very, very important to uh, remember this. I'm able to build up myself. My spirit will become, uh, you can explain it in many ways. It will become more sensitive to the presence of God. Uh, it will become more sensitive to the word of God. You might begin to see that, you know, you are able to understand God's word in a deeper way. You have more hunger for the word of God. So many things are happening in your spirit, man. You're maturing, you're developing, you're growing, you're being built up, you're being strengthened in your spirit, man. That's what Paul said. He who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Now, by speaking in tongues, I cannot build you up. In that same passage, he says, if you have a prophecy, desire prophecy, you know, in a public setting, because 
when i speak in a language which you can understand for example now i'm explaining about tongues you can understand what is happening when you understand you are built up but when i pray in an unknown tongue i am built up personally so that is why we say that tongues as a personal prayer language will build me up but if i use tongues as a message to all of you there must be an interpretation otherwise you cannot understand what i am saying so that these are two categories okay there's another tongues which is tongues as a sign in that like acts chapter 2 uh, people can hear their own language being spoken by some foreigner okay or a person who doesn't know the language so three types of tongues tongues as a personal prayer language tongues as um, a message but that needs interpretation third one is tongues as a sign to an unbeliever so there are three categories of tongues so today we are focusing mainly on tongues as a personal prayer language what will it do it will edify you and me so pray in tongues pray in tongues regularly pray in tongues never do it only to get some answers or no god's will and finished i stopped no every day pray in tongues then jude 120 it says but you beloved building yourself up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit so it says your faith will be built up how to make my faith stronger in god what does it say praying in the holy spirit beloved building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit so that again is the importance of praying in tongues so again you would hear so many testimonies of people who will share with you how they started investing time in prayer in tongues okay and they began to see you know their own spiritual growth and development over a period of time so never neglect praying in tongues it is not that's why i told you when i received the gift of tongues as a, a child i didn't know the value of it if i had known all this i would have practiced it through my younger days but i didn't know i only learned it later when somebody taught me about tongues as a prayer language tongues uh, you know as a prayer language that god wants you to use only after that i started taking it seriously and practicing prayer in tongues so, so so you see there are so many benefits of praying in an unknown language so it will build us up it will build us up and i know uh, you know one particular uh, preacher uh, who also shared how when he began to pray in tongues and then there are some prayers uh, that you can read in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 3. He also started meditating on those prayers for himself and he began to see that as he was teaching God's word, his revelation, anointing upon his life, it just began to multiply just began to multiply and he was amazed you know at what god was doing ephesians 3 16 that also makes a reference to the inner man and it says that he would you he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man so how to be strengthened with might in our inner man pray in tongues okay pray in tongues make time to pray in tongues next when we pray in the spirit, it will also help us to walk in love. Okay, this is the command of God. What do we uh, read in 1 Corinthians 13 towards the end? Faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. So whatever we do must be based on God's love for us, God's love for the people. We must not have any other motivation but love. So when we walk in love, you know, uh, we know that we fulfill the, the law of God. But how can I maintain love within me? Because let's be honest here. From time to time, you know, we get angry. From time to time, we get upset. We're like, what is this? People are like this. You know, uh, this is like this. That is like that. But how can I maintain myself with the right kind of attitude? We are told that 
praying in the spirit will also help me anchor myself in the love of god okay anchor myself in the love of god let me read for us jude 1 verse 20 and 21 but you beloved building yourself up on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit verse 21 by doing this, what, what, what do I do? I pray in the Holy Spirit and I have strengthened myself. In verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So it's in continuation. So by building myself up on my most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, in continuation, that will also help us keep ourselves in the love of God. Okay, so I can position myself, I can anchor myself in God's love. God's love, this could mean that I am personally experiencing God's love more and more. Okay, and we know that uh, perfect love will cast out all fear. So when I am in the love of God, you know, I am becoming strong as an individual, as a minister of God. Uh, and then I'm also able to release that love to the people that I am ministering to. But where am I going to get all this? By the work of the Holy Spirit in my spirit, in my inner man. I have to allow that to happen. And what God has given us to do that is pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Okay, It will establish us in the love of God. Now, let's move on. The next beautiful thing about praying in the Holy Spirit is um, we can experience rest and refreshing. Okay, We can receive rest and refreshing. So in the passage uh, of 1 Corinthians 14, uh, Paul makes a reference there. At, in verse 21, uh, he refers to a passage from Isaiah. Isaiah 28 verses 11 and 12 and I will read for us it says for with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to his people speak to this people to whom he said this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear so early on Isaiah prophesies that God is going to grant rest and refreshing to his people. How? Stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people. When we speak in tongues, is it like stammering, stammering lips and definitely another tongue because we don't understand what we are saying. So Paul is referring to that and he's saying, look, what? you're saying in tongues is that which Isaiah spoke about. God had already said that he is going to give refreshing. He's going to give refreshing, rest and refreshing to his people, which will cause the weary to rest. You know, scripture says, so when I speak in tongues, if I must put it in your language, it's like a spiritual spa. Okay, so if you go to a spa or you know, like a place where they you get nice massage and relaxation and everything, you feel amazing. You know, after a hard, uh, maybe you know, a hard work season, you got a small break and then you're able to refresh yourself, you're able to relax, so your body can experience that rest. But you and I can experience a rest in the spirit man, how? When you pray in tongues, okay? So I don't uh, want us to misapply this. You know what some people do? They don't take any rest. They don't take any physical rest. They say, oh, in the Bible it says, when I pray in the spirit, God will give me rest. And they overwork their bodies. They don't, you know, uh, they don't use their logic. We need to maintain every part of us, you know, with wisdom whether it is your body, whether it is your soul, whether it is your spirit, we are responsible and we have to take responsibility. So we understand about the body and the soul a little bit, you know, more in a practical way, how to deal with it. But for my spirit man, if I, ma if I want to manage my spirit man, 
actually when i let's say take time early morning wake up pray pray in the spirit my mind may say are you making yourself tired what is this why do you want to spend time praying in the spirit but you know what's happening maybe i am tiring my body little bit but i am giving rest to my spirit man you understand so it's an investment it's an investment that i make for my own benefit okay so i've heard in fact one very very um, you know famous preacher his ministry uh, was so busy so busy okay so i don't want to mention names of people but then uh, this particular uh, uh, preacher uh, he preached a lot about faith and he said and he was quite old by the time you know the end of his ministry but he was still going meeting to meeting and preaching and some of his uh, sharing even till today you know you can sense the anointing when you hear what what he's saying so he's kind of a father of uh, one of the um, you know like word of faith movements and things like that so anyway that has its own controversies however this person he said that you know why i am able to continuously pour into other people's lives because i myself get rest in the presence of god how do i get my rest he used to pray in tongues a lot a lot a lot a lot you know the way paul says i pray in tongues much more than all of you so for us we may think how are these people ministering why aren't they getting tired yes physically it's possible to get tired but spiritually you and i can be very renewed we can be very strong we can be refreshed how pray in the spirit that's what god said i will give you rest you know i will give you refreshing how with a stammering lip and another tongue so god has already built in a system for our for our inner man to experience refreshing in the presence of god so if you're feeling spiritually weary and what did we say earlier six you don't know what to pray for just pray in tongues just pray in tongues maybe you can dedicate an entire day and say you know what god i don't know what to pray for i am exhausted i am just going to pray in the spirit you refresh me this is valid very scriptural it will strengthen your spirit man it will renew refresh and give the uh, energy you need right in your spirit man so you see why praying in the holy spirit is so important so many benefits so many blessings which you and i can get from praying in the spirit so there is rest refreshing in the spirit if you pray in the spirit okay uh, you can break off all that weariness tiredness and and you know you would really get that uh, new sense of energy so it brings rest and refreshing okay next another way to praise and magnify god so when we pray in the holy spirit um we see in the book of acts that when people heard those who were baptized you know uh, in the upper room they heard in their own languages people were praising god okay so that is tongues as a sign uh, which was heard in a human language but what were these people saying they were praising god they were praising god then again in acts 10:46 there is the baptism in the holy spirit you know of cornelius and his group of people they also when they were filled and baptized in the holy spirit they were praising god you know after the baptism in the holy spirit so when i pray in the spirit i am able to praise and magnify god so praise and worship basically sometimes when we pray in tongues it may not be intercession you know you may not be praying for somebody but it could be praise it could be glorifying god and remember paul said i pray um, uh, you know in the spirit and i pray with my understanding i sing in the spirit i sing with my understanding so he is singing in the spirit okay so what do we usually sing praise worship magnify god glorify god so when i'm singing in tongues what is that magnifying god glorifying god it's very much scriptural 
very much valid so we can praise and magnify god even when we release songs which are in the holy spirit okay um now okay so another question which we might be asked is if i sing in the spirit how will people understand same thing applies in my personal worship if i am singing in the spirit it's okay let's say we are in a setting where everybody understands what speaking in tongues is like for example all of us here we gather every day we have supernatural hour we all pray in the spirit uh, and what if we sing in the spirit is it okay very much you can sing no problem because you're not offending anybody okay so you can sing but there can be times when that song may not be understood by people so the same rules which apply to interpreting tongues which is spoken you may need to use that when there is an unbeliever or if god is giving you a song sometimes what happens god gives you a song in the spirit so you're singing in tongues but you get an interpretation in the human language maybe in the same tune you get an interpretation so you can sing it in the human language as well you have to interpret it so basically it depends on whether it is a personal prayer praise worship or it is a message kind of a tongue okay so be sensitive about that i'm saying that because most of you here are singers and musicians so if you get a song in tongues don't resist it receive it okay receive it if you're getting a song in tongues sing it and wait on the lord the lord will be able to impress on your heart whether you know it has a translation or what if it has a translation you put down the translation and that would be a song that the people can also sing right so that's how it works as far as praising god is concerned <coughs> then um enable to receive the mysteries of god for our lives okay so this again is uh, very beautiful so just a little bit more about the previous one where you can worship god you know sometimes words are not enough have you heard uh, poems and uh, hymns that say that if i used up all the ink of the oceans lord not enough ink is not enough words are not enough a thousand tongues are not enough to sing your praises so when we are worshiping god sometimes we run out of words you don't know what else to say to worship the lord in those moments it's nice to switch to tongues because tongues will give you a release of the expression of gratitude in your heart you don't know what you're saying but you feel satisfied that i don't know what i'm saying but i'm able to express something from the depths of my heart so sometimes it's just good to worship the lord in tongues just release and let it you know out and just praise god and you'll you'll sense it within yourself that what my language is not able to tell my spirit is able to communicate with the lord because what's happening again first corinthians 14:2 he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries unto god so directly to god i'm speaking mysteries which are locked up within me so express yourself it gives us a nice opportunity to express ourselves now coming next enables our spirits to receive the mysteries of god for our lives okay now uh, let me quickly go through this passage first corinthians 2 seven through 16 and then i'll explain it in a short way but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known they would not have crucified the lord of glory but as it is written i has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him but god has revealed them to us through the spirit 
for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god okay so let me just stop there two things we understood so far we said that there are beautiful things that god has prepared for those who love him i has not seen ear has not heard mind has not conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him so you could say god's plans for me are so beautiful they are so wonderful that nobody knows what these plans are they are too big to grasp but over there what does it say in continuation but god has revealed them to us through his spirit so is it possible for me to know what god is going to do in my life is it possible what does it say it is possible yes it is a mystery but through the holy spirit what does god do one of the roles of the holy spirit is reveal lead us into all truth so god can bring revelation about what he has planned for us so sometimes you know we say things like i know what god is going to do in my life you know 10 years from now 20 years from now 30 years from now and you ask the question how do you know when you pray in the spirit the holy spirit can begin to reveal many things to you so um i pastor has put down his life plan i think till the end of his life or something i'm like how can you know what god is going to do tomorrow or next year or 10 years from now if you go by what scripture says yes these are hidden things but the more time you spend in the presence of god when you pray in the holy spirit holy spirit can reveal even the hidden things concerning your life or you know the life of your people or a nation he can do that he can reveal it how does it help to know some of these things maybe we can prepare beforehand if we know this is what we do what do we do we start planning for it we start working towards it we start praying things through regarding that so it is possible to receive a revelation of the so called hidden mysteries in christ through the work of the holy spirit are you understanding or is it mysterious what i'm saying i hope you can understand okay excellent so yes these things are hidden but holy spirit can reveal that's what i'm saying so when we pray in the holy spirit it's possible the next part of what we read we said the spirit searches all things because my spirit knows what i'm thinking okay i may be speaking but i might be thinking oh my coffee is cold right so my spirit knows that so the spirit of a man knows the thoughts of the of a man and the scripture says the spirit of god knows the thoughts of god so when we ask the question what is god's will god's spirit knows what god is thinking what god's will is okay and he is able to tell it to us he is able to understand the will of god and he can tell us god's will for your life is this or that so even before things happen for us as believers we can know okay based on what god reveals we can't know everything obviously you know if god doesn't think something is important for us to know he may not reveal but many things if we follow you know praying in the spirit depending on the holy spirit you and i can know even things in the future hidden things mysteries we can know because the spirit of god knows the will of god and he reveals it says he reveals it to us so we can know these things now let's continue from where i stop okay mm, i will pick up from okay for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god 
that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one, for who he... Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So even if you didn't get the whole part there, the last bit, what does it say? It says, we have the mind of Christ. Or in other words, you and I can think the way God is thinking. His will is in us also. You know, like potential energy, they say, right? We have it. We already have the will of God. We have the mind of Christ. If you're in Christ Jesus, you have the mind of Christ. So even when I'm praying for somebody, okay, I'll just give you some example, then you'll understand. I'm saying that the Holy Spirit can reveal the plan of God or the will of God. So when I'm praying for somebody, okay, many times it has happened to me, people will come and they'll say, Pastor, I got, you were praying for a job, I got job. I got two companies. I got Facebook. I got Microsoft. Which one should I take? Okay. What will I tell now? Both are, I usually I tell them, you decide based on what you want. One brother, he came and he said, both are good. Both have the same similar pay package, excellent profile, everything. Pastor, please tell me which job should I take? Very difficult. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what is going to happen in the future. What kind of a boss he's going to get. I don't know. But whenever people come for prayer, you know what I do? I usually just, not in front of them, but in my, within myself, I just pray in the Spirit. I say, Holy Spirit, you know. The Spirit of the Lord knows the mind of God. I have the mind of Christ. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. No mind has conceived the things God has prepared for those who love him, but it has been revealed by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit reveal which is the way that this person needs to go. So you just pray in the Spirit for some time. right? But usually we never tell people what to do because it's their personal choice and decision. But I would give them some wisdom. And then, you know, I, I remember in that situation, I had some wisdom. I told him, something my brother look for uh, whatever this kind this kind of uh, 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 a thing if you find it in either of the companies maybe i didn't again say you should because people have to make their own choices but maybe that is something you can consider so i got that thing and i told him and he picked the right job and it went on very well similarly from time to time people come and they say pastor i've applied to go to london Shall I go? What can I say? I don't know. I'm not God. But based on what we have just read, just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. You see how God wants you to pray for that person. Uh, and you pray. right? Remember I told you one of our uh, um, students, she went last week. Like she went. So the funny thing is, in the case of this particular girl, when she came for prayer, with her parents of course, and she asked me, this is my desire. I'm not sure if I have to go. Even her parents were not sure. What do you think? Do you think God will open the way? When I prayed in the spirit, I just got this one picture. And I knew she had to go. Okay, I never do that. But I told them, look, I feel... And I didn't tell it to the child. I told her, you please go. I want to talk to your parents. Because later, parents would be like, what is this pastor? You, know, you told our child that she has to go abroad and we have to pay for it. You know, there'll be a lot of chaos. So I sent the child away and I spoke to the parents and I said, look, when I prayed, I felt that God is opening the door for your daughter, but it is your decision. What you want to do, you do. This is my sense. God is opening the door. Anyway, they prayed. They also felt the same thing. So they went ahead. There were a lot of challenges, but, you know, finally she's gone now. 
and people around her are like how did you go because there were a lot of issues like you know documentation this and that but god opened it so in the past god revealed the future and said this door is open for you okay so what am i saying i'm saying even when things are unknown you pray in the spirit when you pray in the spirit sometimes we don't understand what we are saying right we cannot get the exact translation of what we said in the spirit but after praying let's say for one hour some matter is there you prayed for one hour within your spirit you will have a knowing okay knowing means you will get a grip on okay this is what i should do or maybe this is what they should consider or this is what god might do so holy spirit can reveal he can reveal so take time in praying in tongues at the end of that prayer session you might actually have an idea of what you were praying for okay do you, am i clear is it understandable yes so do that you will get peace on what the holy spirit is revealing so even though you and i cannot understand tongues when we pray in tongues holy spirit can reveal the hidden mysteries okay now next when we pray in tongues the gifts of god are stirred up within us i think in the last supernatural hour i told you that paul he writes to timothy he says therefore i remind you to stir up the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of my hands second timothy 16 stir up the gift of god which is in you how do we stir up the gift of god now we don't have you know um passages that explain how to stir up but it seems like when we pray in tongues the gifts of the spirit are stirred up within us so what i mean by that is let's say you have uh, you know a cup of tea okay or a cup of coffee you put some sugar in it can you just drink it as it is what should you do you have to stir it up when you stir it up what happens it mixes and the full the fullness you know of what that tea is meant to be you are able to taste it so in the same way when i pray in tongues what is happening within me you know god has placed all the gifts of the holy spirit it starts to get charged or you can use the word activated okay it gets activated many times you see if let's say somebody is asking you to come and uh, preach okay friday morning it's my turn to preach or um, uh, let's say um, you know something i'm leading worship one of the things which you can do is spend time in prayer spend time in personal prayer even in tongues so when you do that what is happening you're stirring okay you're activating you're recharging your system so when you are ministering what happens there is little more ease in the release of the gifts of the spirit suddenly maybe you're singing a song and it's prophetic okay so all the other gifts of the spirit can get easily activated if you activate one gift which is tongues so pray 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 in the spirit like charge yourself up so even when i go for ministry let's say sunday morning preaching or something like that i take a lot of time to pray in the spirit because what's happening i'm just activating the gifts of the spirit within me so that there is a smooth release of the gifts maybe even when i'm coming here when i'm driving you know for your class or something i'm always praying in the spirit i'm saying holy spirit you release you release those words you know you minister to the hearts of the people just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit what happens there's a easier flow of the gifts of the holy spirit okay so uh, and especially you know sometimes we have ministry time when we call out prophetic words or we call out um, you know words of knowledge we speak healing command healing over people how can the holy spirit minister in all those ways when i have stirred myself up 
stir up you know pray in, pray in tongues you spend one hour two hours three hours pray in tongues then you go you minister there'll be an easy flow how we don't know the dynamics but it works okay so it really works use tongues to stir up the gifts of the spirit within you and you will see that god is able to minister you know powerfully uh, through uh, speaking in tongues okay so just some of the benefits we have shared let me stop we have about 10 minutes we can take up questions many more benefits are there i told you to go through the book you know apc publication um uh, the benefits of speaking in tongues okay so uh, let's talk about maybe you know your comments and some of the questions that you may have anything that you always wanted to ask so there is one question here in the chat and krisha says pastor how may how may i oh, okay uh, all right so krisha you could um, um okay so you can just write to me Okay, so uh, my ID would be Nancy dot Ramya at uh, APC Bible College dot org. So you can just write write to that ID, and I I'll be able to answer your questions personally. Um, yes, any other questions? Yes, Rin. Hmm. Right. Okay. So, uh, what Rin is saying is, she's saying like Acts chapter two, when the disciples were first baptized in the Holy Spirit, they were speaking in languages that others could understand. There were people from at least fifteen different regions, and they all heard in their own language. So, as I told you, Rin, uh, you see this in one place that. human language they are speaking in human language but um you know tongues is speaking in heavenly languages so first corinthians 14 and verse 1 let me quickly read it for you yeah it's right here so verse 2 Oh no! Um, for, uh, sorry, thirteen, First Corinthians thirteen. Yeah. So here Paul says, "Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become as sounding brass or a clanging cymbal." So here, what is he saying? He's saying, "Tongues of men that we understand, and of angels." Now, is he talking about? tongues most likely because he's put like this is continuation first corinthians 12 there is a list of 12 gifts of the holy spirit then he continues to talk about love how you should exercise the gifts in love and again he talks about gifts of the holy spirit so he's talking about gifts of the spirit only but here he says tongues of men and of angels okay and again he says in first corinthians 14:2 that when one speaks in tongues he can't understand okay so and he speaks mysteries unto god so our understanding is when we speak in tongues it can be heaven's language or tongue of angels or tongue of men it can be both also so in that um, acts 2 they spoke in tongues of men but we can't regulate god no we they never thought or planned that they have to speak in tongues of men but it happened other times you don't see that it's not mentioned that they spoke in human languages so when we are speaking in tongues we can speak any language in it may be an angelic language most of the time i think it's angelic language because we don't at least i have never in my experience i've never heard a human language but i think few years ago uh in a bible college supernatural hour we had some african students so um when everyone was speaking in tongues one person i think it was an indian student 
speaking loudly and they were saying words we had a congolese guy and he said you're speaking in my language so it can be human language sometimes but it can also be a heavenly language language of angels so it's not in our control we we don't know which language we are speaking yeah does it answer okay great great yeah anything else we have about 4 minutes left yes yes francis mm -hmm. which one nothing that i know of uh, francis see because language is to communicate right so there are angelic beings then there is human beings so god has given this these two sets of languages i think yeah okay i'm satisfied okay nice great okay any other ah yes vimal kare yeah so as i told you when we pray in the holy spirit we can have many um, spiritual experiences sometimes you will not feel anything let me tell you sometimes you will even feel bored <laughs> but don't go by the feeling go by what is revealed in the word so tell yourself i am praying prayers that are limitless prayers which are you know without boundaries i am uh, praying prayers which are perfect i am giving rest to my spirit so just go with it so the times when you have these spiritual experiences uh, so vimal is saying sometimes you feel warmth you feel power so when you have such experiences well and good but when you don't don't stop pray anyway good yes Yes, yes. Slowly, <laughs> Prince's hand is going up. Go ahead. What is your question, Prince? Mm. Okay. Uh, good question. So, Prince is asking. Tongues is a uh, angel's language. So, is there a language for the demons? So what i would say based on scripture is demons communicate okay they definitely communicate and uh, they might also perceive some of uh, the angelic language because who are demons they are disembodied spirits they are angels you know who have been thrown here on the earth uh, but then somehow the tongues which we speak right nobody can understand it is heaven's language but what did we see in verse 2 we speak mysteries unto god so only god understands what we are speaking so whenever we speak in tongues even angels cannot understand what we are saying humans cannot understand only god understands so obviously even demons cannot understand now do they have separate language uh, uh, honestly i don't know they communicate so maybe they have something some code language maybe i don't know <laughs> yeah pimmel Okay, so uh, Vimal is saying when we pray in the spirit, we are creating uh, a, a spiritual realm or an atmosphere through which we are fighting demons. Mm. okay 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 so when we pray in tongues we go to a spiritual realm okay fine i i see where you're coming from it's more like psalm 91 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high you go into that place of protection as you pray in the spirit okay so yeah thank you there's one question i'll quickly answer this and um, wrap up it's 10:50 uh, can we speak in heavenly languages and how can we understand heavenly languages through the holy spirit so surya that's what i'm saying we we can speak in heavenly languages uh, if we are baptized in the holy spirit and we have the gift of tongues and uh, can we understand heavenly languages 
no we cannot understand unless there is the operation of another gift of the spirit which is interpretation of tongues okay uh, so uh, i i will leave it at that uh, and uh, yeah uh, i hope all of you enjoyed the class please feel free to post your questions on the stream page uh, and uh, we we will close off for now let me quickly say a word of prayer heavenly father we thank you for the revelation about praying in the spirit we we ask lord that you will continue to enlighten us and help us to apply all this father for the glory of your name in jesus name we pray amen so thank you and bye bye everyone see you later bye online students as well i'll post my uh, email address here thank you